This is a Doom Magazine exclusive interview. All right, so, Double D. Yes. All right, so right now, let's talk about the new song that you have pushing that's bubbling right now. Um, well, actually, there are two. There are two songs I'm pushing simultaneously. Um, there's Cry Cree, um, and then there's Chest Full of Shotty. Chest Full of Shotty. <laughs> yes. All that name the combo. <laughs> All right. It's funny. Um, last summer, a uh, producer in Jamaica, because I'm a gun lover and a, and a collector of guns, so I have a couple of weapons. So, um, so every now and again, um, I will either talk about guns or gun safety or protection of women or stuff like that so people are aware that i'm a lover so um this producer say hey wd you're going like you're a bad girl my son i read him come gear put a gun tune on it mm. you know at the time i've never written a gun song before mm. so it was a little challenging for me um so i uh, just put a shot to me because I, I do i do have a, a chest with because i have shotguns as well mm. so I wanted to not just really say everything about guns, so I use, you know, a chest full of shotty, you know, mm-hmm. so it kind of hide what I'm saying, mm-hmm. um, you know, but still saying what I wanted to say. So I was just thinking about the chest that I have mm-hmm. with guns. So uh, that's how I came up with the name chest full of shotty. But it was just, it was, and it's not just glorifying my guns. It's it's like saying, you know, I I love them wine in my second verse because, you know, I remember growing up in Jamaica, my mom had a restaurant and we were robbed so many times and, you know, my mom got gun butted for her money. So I remember, I remember now feeling empowered. I am not afraid of, you know, I mean, having a gun doesn't stop you from dying, but I don't feel helpless. At least I could try to save my life opposed to begging somebody to spare my life just like that. So it's talking about that kind of stuff. Just, you know, um, me feeling empowered that I'm able to defend myself. Right. I'm not encouraging killing anyone or anything like that. So it's just saying I and this is why I love and why I feel empowered in, in having a gun. You know, so I but I use the term chest full of shotty. So I'm just saying, me have a chest full of shotty, I'm a don't borrow none. So they all mine. So it ain't like so it's, it, they belong to someone. Tell me, tell me what, what is it like to to have a gun collection? Like, really? Like, when you really, um, has there been any moments where you draw off your gun, somebody this year? No. That's all right. So I'm, I'm originally from New York, um, and now live in Baltimore, but. I moved away initially and I moved to West Virginia because my dad had a house there. And when the economy crashed, that's how I ended up moving there and working with, I used to work for the state of West Virginia when I moved there and, um, working with West Virginians and not having a gun. Cause at the time we didn't have any weapons, you know, coming from New York was not part of who we are. And, um, everybody around me had weapons, everybody and the church invited us um out one day the church bus came around and and they invited us shooting mm-hmm. you know so it's a part of the cultural norm there in west virginia to own weapons okay. not having weapons make you look mm-hmm. out of place and that's, in it, that's in west virginia, west virginia. martinsburg west virginia okay. so not having it makes you look out of place so we used to borrow their weapons when we went because the church t- take us shooting the church, the church. <laughs> yes, I get it all the time. So you had a gun toting pastor. And congregation. It's like I'm saying the pastor the, the congr- 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 everybody. It's like I'm saying it's a cultural norm okay. in West Virginia. So when you don't have one, they look at you like that's like that's also like in Texas. Not having a gun, you kinda look weird not having a, a weapon. Right. You know. So um we were tired of borrowing people's weapons when we go when the church took us um to a sh- to the shooting range and, and stuff so we decided to buy our own so when you're around it like that and then you know as you buy you want more you like it you know you want different types and you know you know so that's how we started collecting now when you own a gun most of the times people are crazy about things they can't have or if if they're with if, if they're not allowed to have it that's when they get crazy when you own and you fire a gun you know the power of the gun and you know you hold that power and you know that if you squeeze that trigger because when you fire a lot of bullets and you hit targets and stuff you know that you're you that's somebody's life so when you when you're a responsible gun owner you are it never dawns on you to kill somebody when you're angry because you know the moment you pull that trigger 
that you've given up your entire life. So I've never had that feeling where I want to shoot somebody. I've had feelings I want to bust somebody's face with my fists. But I've never had a feeling where I wanted to shoot somebody because guns are for self-defense, protecting your family, protecting your home. So I've never had that feeling. And that's why I say they're, they're, if you're hot-headed and if you're irrational, you shouldn't be owning guns to me. Um, right. So it's about personality. You know, and most of the people in West Virginia, they're used to having guns. So it's not something, it's like somebody from New York who's fresh and is kind of getting a legal gun for the first time, maybe, oh my God, you know, that kind of stuff. But I've never, I've n it never dawned on me to shoot anyone when I'm angry because shooting that person is ending my life, essentially, ending my freedom. And it's not justified and I have to leave my children. So those, you find that center as a gun owner. So never dawn on me to shoot anyone when I'm angry. And a lot of people have p pissed me so, off. Let's talk about kids. You just mentioned kids. Yes. How many kids do you have? Two, boy and, two and girl. boy and girl. Young teenagers. Mm -hmm. Young teenagers. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, tell me, so what? what is it like being an entertainer and having kids that's, you know, in... That understand, yeah, that understand. I mean, actually, it's a good thing um, because I use them because I'm not just a reggae artist. I I am also a hip hop artist partially. So, um, because they're into hip hop a lot more, uh, when I write something, I'll ask them how it sounds, and they'll be brutally honest. I'm like, nah, I'm, I ain't feeling that, you know. So I use them as guinea pigs. I'm like, all right, how you feel about this, you know? And they're like, yo, mom, that's dope. I like that, you know, and that kind of stuff. So they're kind of, and they're, they're, they're going to be brutally honest with me and tell me something. Now nah, it doesn't sound good. Or I'm liking that. I'm liking that, you know, so that I kind of use them as my testers. So, I mean, I wanted to back up a little bit. So chest full of shati, that's how that came about. Um, but cry crease, another song I'm pushing. I just wrote that too. Um, because sometimes people say I sound too American in my songs. Um, so I wrote, cry creed to show that i can i can be raunchy and i can be raw hardcore jamaica dancehall jamaican so it was it wasn't even meant to be a serious song i was actually surprised at, at how well it, it has been doing um especially since marvin and nikisha did that viral video marvin and nikisha are you know the top that, that was all world star yeah actual world star picked it up even marvin when marvin called me he's like they've never picked up and because they've, they've done viral videos for a lot of people um they more star normally pick up his antics what i did he does but they've never picked up one of his viral videos and i noticed that since he did my vi my viral video a lot of people have been asking them and so far the views have been 1.4 million views on that particular song yeah <laughs> on world star you know, so it's added. It's a, it's a, and people are asking, you know, on the comments, there's a lot of negative stuff, but this is entertainment. Let me ask you, mm -hmm. So, who manages Doji? Me. So, how is that going? How, what, what is it like being an artist and managing yourself? Um, because I've had experience doing it with the people under me, um, it's kind of easy because I know what to do. And when I'm actually contacting someone, I don't say, I don't, I act as if I'm a third person. So when I'm contacting someone, you say, I'm like, look, um, um, I want you to take a look at this artist, Double D, and I'll send the, the, the bio and the stuff and the work, the body of work. And so I let them focus on that opposed to me, the person. So I treat Double D as a third person when I'm dealing with people. And um, I find, and then they're like, you're the same person. And I'm like, yeah, because I think if they realize that it's me, they're going to treat it a lot differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so this video went viral. Mm -hmm. um, has, has there been any like phone calls or people contacting you about this video? Well, to be honest with you, um, things are starting to pick up a lot on my, especially on my social media. And um, but I don't know if it's from Cry Cree, mm -hmm. but I do know that a lot of people ask me about the song. Where can they find it? Uh, I remember this girl. I think she's from Germany. Um, I had actually posted um, the song on my IG from my Facebook page saying that it's on it's available on iTunes and I guess she went and bought it and she's like oh my god this changed my whole day 
I loved the song, you know. She wasn't a fan before. She was just, it just came up and she, you know. So I think it's doing good. I'm going to shoot a video for it soon. But most importantly, what's happening to me now, um, Radio Pushes TV um, has picked up my um, career and they're definitely working on my branding. So Radio Pushes TV um, is a branding company that um, they really focus on hip hop artists um so i i'm honored to be that other artist that's there with um a different flavor okay. you know um so most people on there that they're pushing are actually hip-hop artists um and you know since they have taken up my career and stuff like that i've significantly seen my ig account went up you know my followers went up the interaction now when i um when i like something people are thanking me for liking it a lot of hip-hop producers are reaching out to me to work with me as well so and and, and the video for chest full of shotty is on their apple t it was on apple tv roku amazon fire stick and radio pushes tv um daily that's really, really cool. Um, now, um, as a reggae slash hip-hop hip -hop artist, how do you feel about overall your sound and and just really being like the best of both worlds in one for, you know? I, I mean, reggae is my underlying genre, but I, I'm a person I don't mind evolving and I've seen that hip hop has embraced me a lot faster than the reggae fraternity has. And I me I'll go wherever that, that who welcomes me with open arms, I'll go there. But I'm still not leaving reggae because one of the things that the CEO said when we had our conference, first conference meeting, is that he liked my sound. I sound very different and I sound like no one. You know, my style is different, that total incorporation of Hip hop and reggae, so I think that's what's appealing because they put me under the campaign mass appeal, and you know they just label me as it, it, the international person with the international sound, because I'm also a singer too. Right. So you gonna do singing for us? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. One thing about us, we like to put you on the spot. Yeah. Um, sing or do, I mean, is it sing? I, sing? Yeah. Okay. Um. Lick up on the ice, everything is nice. Me, I go walk you like it's your birthday. Oh, hold on. Let me get a cheer, hands in the ear. Me, I go wind by you something in the worst way. Oh, temple that stuff, me, I bring gum gear. No Now ramp with the something, cause you don't know I feel. Grab me here, pull me down, pan the cheer. You know no semi love it anywhere you make me say oh, na 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 so that's birthday sex okay, cop it nice. let me ask you about that because <laughs> when i listen to the song <laughs> i always say where she come up with the 10 phone as it where did that come from <laughs> I, I don't mean you know <laughs> i i think i have it in two songs but um i i put the shorts on one time um and I posted it on social media. I wasn't even, honestly, it was, I was, I, I went, just went to Jamaica and I bought this Jamaican sweatshirt and a Jamaican shorts. So I was just showing off my Jamaican shorts and my Jamaican shirt. And then the focus was down there. So, um, this guy said, um, why double the, uh, 10 bona, you know? <laughs> so I, I took it off and, and I decided to put it in my songs. You know, and again, because some of my songs are sensual, um, I find that you know the, when you say those kind of things, they all they they're they're keywords. I mean, to... I tell you, I tell you, it's like something that for me personally, <laughs> once I heard it, it just ring. After I turn the song, I'm song no playing. I'm just like tempo, tempo. I'm like, Damn. you know, like, that just like. Like and and I and I put it in. It's in birthday sex and it's in cry cree. Yeah. yeah. Um. So and and again, you know, it's about keywords, and because and people will ask me, can you really do what you say you're doing in cry cree yeah. and that kind of stuff? You know. So you you have to bring attention to the song, right. and that's basically what I did. You know, by putting that, and it it's kind of going to be a Monica for me. Like, and you'll see it come up in in other songs. About the ten pound, it's like so when you talk That's about double D thing, yeah, right. right. I like that. But it's real. 
I mean, maybe not 10 pound, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> well, to me, I, I think if you follow me, you'll find out what's going on, where that is concerned. You know, it, that's the best thing I can say. You follow a person's page, you'll see what's going on and make a determination as to what's going on. So that will that will tell you if you're interested in a person or not, because you'll see what's going on, what they're doing, and you know, because but, you. But some people, some people tend not to share. Your relationship to the world. I mean, you, you don't have to me. You don't have to get up every day and put, oh, I love this person on social media. You don't have to because you have fans that that's going to feel some type of way. And most of my fan, based on um, my marketing stats, most of my, my fans are, believe it or not, 17 year olds to 25 year olds. That's the big chunk of my fans, believe that's like amazing for me um that's the big market of my fans so and then the other but most of my fans are males so they live in this fantasy world that you know because most of them as soon as i accept a friendship from them on facebook or, or i like something on their page they're in my dm oh, really? yeah so i get it a lot so so you have a lot of young men Sliding in the uh, yes, all the time. You know, I mean, I I I'm not mad because it comes with the territory. Yeah. I do get mad if somebody calls me on Facebook. I just uh, accept your friendship. You're calling me. I hate that. I mean, okay. I don't know you. So what do I, what do we have to talk about? You can text me on Facebook and I'll answer because I try to answer at least one text from every fan. Really? Wow. Yes, I try because. So you're pretty yeah because yeah again it's about marketing i'm a very good marketer so i try to answer i'm not one that will ignore um a, a, a text purposely i'll i try to i spend a day and i'll go through and i was like hey what's up how are you doing and it depends on what you say to me if you say something sexual i'm not going to respond to you okay. to me that's just my my if you say some uh, uh, you know and I, i'm not your baby you know, if you say, Double D, what's up, or whatever, or I like your music, or I think you're sexy, or something like that, I'll, I'll say thank you, and, you know, but I'll respond. Now, let's talk about the video that you have coming up, like you're going to shoot soon. Mm -hmm. um, what's the concept for it? What do you think you're going to I'm not do? sure yet. Um, Cry Cree, because at one point, I, because Marvin and um, Nikisha had um, popularized the, the song through their viral video, at one point I was considering using them again. Oh, that's dope. So tell me, me know say, you, you know, you have a gun collection and you, you know, you have some bad girl lyrics. So <laughs> <laughs> has there any, been anybody that really tried to test WD yet? I mean, in the industry, um, because I'm really a nice person, you know, and I'm very respectful when I talk to people. Um, I don't come off as disrespectful. But I think what happened is a lot of people when I, that I do business with in Jamaica, they see me as this Yankee, you know. So um, sometimes I remember when I just started and when they're when I when I'll say, hey, I'm paying for a mix in a master and a song, they'll they'll mix it and not master it and stuff like that. And sometimes I have to come really show because I'm from Almond Town, Kingston four, you know, so I have to bring out the Almond Town in me to let them know what time it is. And, you know, I have to say some stuff and. Yeah, I'm um I'm just I'm a mountain and normal, you know. So yeah, I've I've had that. Um, but again, it's never where a situation where I've ever threatened anyone with violence or anything like that. But you know, I have to cuss up bad word and make people know what time it is. I make them know say you're on a punk or whatever. Because I mean, I wouldn't have if I was gentle, I wouldn't have gotten in a male dominated business. I, you know, I was an IT person before, so I'm used to being a, a only female in a male dominated environment. You know. So I'm used to that challenge and all that stuff. So I'm not afraid to work with males and, you know, because you have to have some serious tenacity and balls when you're stepping in any male dominated industry. Um, and especially I'm not one of, I don't come into business conventionally as most females where they're at the mercy of the males in the industry. I feel like it's always that way that they're at the mercy of, of yes. the male. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. I um, don't know. I think, I think there's some, there's some strong 
females in the industry? Um, that, but some, some of us, do, all right, I'm not saying every single female is at the mercy now because I am just lucky. I'm, I'm not one of those. I use my own money um, in the business. So having your own money to start a business is the biggest factor mm -hmm. that does not put you at the mercy. The moment you come in, because even the other day, Rick Ross said something that, that really pissed me off, um, where he said that he doesn't sign. The reason why he didn't sign any female artists, he's afraid that he's going to sleep with them. Okay. So, like yes. That. I like that so because I, I watched that interview and it was actually very, very interesting to me. Now, I feel like with Rick Ross, that statement could be twisted in different ways. What's your view on it? No, that's what I'm saying. I honestly, I, I used, it's, it used to be somebody I respected. I don't anymore from that statement. That statement? Mm -hmm. really? Let me tell you why. Um, we um we are we as a people black people have been oppressed for many years of not being given rights to do stuff okay we never liked it right so now we're we're not in that we are, we've had plenty of opportunities where a lot of us are rich things have happened you know we're educated mm -hmm. um and you're going to hold a female back because you can't keep it in your pants again i'm I, as i said to you before um i'm a i'm an hr so I take that statement very personal as an HR person. Okay. So maybe so, maybe from that perspective, like saying that. So to me, if you don't work at any females at all, mm -hmm. like because there's always booty shaking in his videos. <laughs> so to me, you're saying that they're good enough to shake their booties, but they're not good enough for you to give a contract. No, but here's what, what he said to me that made sense. He said he's uncomfortable personally. And being that he is, he's, he's not really just like a, um, a Russell Simmons, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It made it different to me. Being that he's Rick Ross, and you would you would expect him to have a lot of groupies. Him being Rick Ross and now having groupies all the time coming around. Now this is where the problem comes in. That's why he didn't really. That's why he didn't really sign a female artist because then he feel like, you know. All right. The reason why I can never understand that justification, that's saying to me that you also can't control your dick. Sorry. <laughs> um, if you have a wife or somebody that you love, mm -hmm. groupies. Because all right, for me as a female artist in the business, there's a lot of guys that come after me. Um, you know, you get it. it regardless whether you're male or female, right. your DM is filled with people hitting on you. Um, want they don't really want you. They want what you. They think you represent. Right. Um, so you get that, and, I, and I'm nowhere near his level, and I get it. So I know that he. But my thing is that um, you can't deny somebody something based on their sex, based on their gender, and you have a lot of talented female artists out there. Right. And for me to, to for you to actually say you're afraid, and my thing is that's why you have managers, you have people in between. People don't have to. You don't have to be person personable with the artists. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.